Bat chat, chat, bat chat, bat chat, 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 Hello, 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 everybody. What a time to be alive. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Matt the Bat from Matt the Bat's Bat Chat Chicho, and uh, this is another episode of Bat Chats. It's the interview series where I bring on super unique guests with super unique perspectives. Uh, hey, if you're new here, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Uh, if you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to hit that little bell notification. Ding, you know, ding. Yeah, like that, exactly. Uh, that way you can stay up to date on all the cool videos I'm making. Speaking of cool, we probably have one of the coolest guests I could fathom coming on a show like this. Today we have a guest who I, I really just admire so much. I mean, not just for his incredible art, uh, which by the way has become such a huge staple of internet culture and even fashion, but for also just being a really wise and humble young guy with a pretty amazing success story. Everybody, please welcome Harry, aka Ketnips. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> What's up, man? Thank you. Thank you for having me on, man. <laughs> that was quite the intro. You like that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you like the sick. applause, the, the live studio audience is pretty amazing, right? Oh, man, it's uh yeah it's pretty sick <laughs> thanks man dude i can't i it's so nice to see your your handsome handsome face how's life been it's been a while since we've seen each other yeah it's been a minute uh it's it's been well dealing with covid and everything it, it's uh it's a whole thing but uh yeah no it's been a while you've been surviving everything okay like mental health doing all right yeah yeah it's all good it's uh it, it's just been a weird we uh yeah because i had like everything planned in terms of traveling and doing all this and then suddenly it's like nope let's we're not doing that but it's good because it gave me some chance to sort of readjust and do some other stuff and focus on you know like seeing family and things like this so it's been okay hell yeah i mean it's definitely been a curse but also a blessing and a lot of ways for a lot of artists and people for moments like those um you're you're still in wales right now yep i'm in cardiff at the moment yeah in uk very nice uh it's so it's like four or five p.m. over there, right? Yeah, just a little later here. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because yeah. when I was doing the math, when I was scheduling this, I was like, "Holy shit! This <laughs> I got to figure out how to do this." I was like looking at the world clock. <laughs> <laughs> it changes too. Why well, I didn't realize I was like for a whole six months I was late for every meeting, and it's because it like changed from seven hours ahead of LA time to like eight hours ahead. And I didn't realize something like we still do daylight savings or don't. I'm, 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 I don't know. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. The LA time difference. That's crazy. That's. Uh... That's that's a pretty big difference. Yeah, no, I used to post everything at like 3 a.m. like when I first started, and then like got to a point where I was just like, I'm not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's it's 11 over here, so uh, I had to wake up a little early, start you know getting all this stuff together, start getting it going, and um, the reason I was able to do this was because of Super Lost Coffee, who. Coincidentally, I know that you know from your pop-up shop back in 2019, I think that uh, they supplied the coffee and maybe like a limited edition bag. But yeah, they sponsored mm -hmm. this episode. So uh, thank you so much, Super Lost Coffee. So my friend, I would love for you to tell me kind of about your origin story and about how all of this came to be. Because I, I remember my first, my first time seeing you was because of the iconic sticker that was popping up on Instagram and elsewhere. And uh, I was really drawn to it as someone who loves character art and animations. And then your overall brand just kind of slowly started seeping into my head, uh, which is all you can really hope for, for building a brand. Is that, would you agree? Yeah. Um, it's sort of strange you use the word brand because I've always just seen it as like an Instagram account. Um, and I, I, so I started uh, sort of in my last year of high school. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to do in my life. Everyone's going off to university and stuff. And I just didn't know. Um, and at the time I was doing merchandise design for uh, some YouTubers and things like this and just like illustrating online. Danny Duncan. Yes, sir. <laughs> Done my homework, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, uh, so I was doing all those stuff and, and that was fine. But then I started uh, drawing this bean character on, on a separate account called Ketnips. Um, and that was where I sort of vented and when I, where I would like draw the really sort of the strange stuff which I couldn't sell to like YouTubers and things. So like any of the scraps went to Ketnips and then eventually it, it just became the main thing. Um, and Danny, who you mentioned, uh, helped get it running and things like this. And uh, sort of the ball started rolling quite quickly and, and conveniently as everyone left the university, it was like, okay, I'll just do this. And uh, yeah, and, um, and then I just kept at it and then did the sticker with Instagram and that allowed me to travel and sort of see the world a bit. So then I went to the States 
um, and have been, yeah, just in the game for a little minute, doing bits and bobs, doing clothing, um, and uh, now doing a lot of animation and things like that. So, but it's fun, and hopefully, I'll get to travel very soon again. But I hope so too. You know, everything's a bit up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I hope I hope that for you because obviously, a big part of your work relies on that. And to me, it's so crazy that your your work is so worldwide. I mean, it's it's on clothes, it's on toys, murals, like in different cities. It's just, it's insane. And when I was looking at your pages today, just to kind of refresh my memory on everything, uh, it's crazy. I saw you have almost 3 million Instagram followers and almost or over 4 million TikTok followers. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> I, I don't count TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I know. TikTok's like, I would say I, I, like... I, I, <laughs> every every two hundred thousand is like a thousand Instagram followers, right? Like, yeah. Well, it was like I got I got to like four million and a bit on TikTok in, in like less than a year, and then it's taken me like five years on Instagram. So it's like to get to three million, so or not even. So yeah, I don't know. Something's up. <laughs> that is, I mean, that's just insane. And uh, I I remember when I met you, we met we met two years ago. We talked about that a little bit. Um, we met at three six eight where you're doing a pop up shop with Danny, who is another. Uh, he's a mutual best friend of ours and he's also a giant you know animator artist uh like yourself and uh we were we were setting up for the pop-up shop and we were cutting out characters in the room and you guys were you know going to work painting and all that kind of stuff um and i feel like we immediately connected because we both love the same music which was hilarious because we were just like <laughs> i love like talking people's ear off about music and i could tell that you were the same way when it came to like these like weird indie artists that we liked. Yeah. I remember you listening to music and you were just zoned in like crazy making your shit. And uh, I, I just knew from the from the get go, I was like, I love this guy. He's got such artist vibes, just fully submersed, just in the zone. No, that's that's me just being very introverted and not dealing with like the 20 people that were in the room. I was like, <laughs> nope, <laughs> just <laughs> put my headphones on, do my work. Uh, so funny. Yeah, you were, you were spray painting the iconic Bean who I definitely want to talk about. And I remember that there was something, there was something up with getting the wrong shade of pink. And you noticed it right away. And I was like, oh my God. The thing that I immediately liked about that was I was like, okay, this guy is so precious about his characters in the best way. And you're so uh, precious about the legacy of Bean. So I want to talk about Bean, who is probably your, your biggest character. Yeah, yeah. Bean, Bean is the daily driver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe it's like being overly precious and, and you know, very I'm, I'm very particular when it comes to certain things. Um, sorry, there's a police car. You probably can't hear it. Anyway. <laughs> I can't. Oh, there's two. Is, are they coming yeah, so, for you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do, uh, man? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so i uh, kind of precious about the way the character looks and things like this. But uh, at the end of the day, it's just like, like I, I feel like you sort of have to maintain a certain uh, quality and, and respect that on all levels, even if it is just like a cutout at a pop-up shop or something, because maybe people take pictures with it and, you know, maybe it is like someone will look at it and be like, hmm, that doesn't look the right color. And I don't know, like some random weird person might say that, but it would really bug me. I don't know why. <laughs> no, I think yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that is so admirable. And th the funny thing is when you do see it different is like, I remember I sent you a message when I was in uh, London at the market or whatever. And I saw among, this has happened many times. I've been to like flea markets and I've seen your knockoff <laughs> pins. And the first thing I noticed is like the shade of pink is always different. The eyes are like a little less almondy. Like there's always something that's just like, a little bit of a knockoff so it does make a big difference so i completely understand what you mean with that yeah that really bugs me too I, and i <laughs> like i think it's kind of it, it's deceptively hard to draw the bean accurately like if you've ever tried it's like like a lot of people confuse the nose and the mouth but as like a, a giant lip or something or like a three <laughs> uh or they just get lazy i don't know uh and then there's all these things like but yeah well, dude, when I, when I sent you that picture the first time, because I think I sent you multiple times, because I have them in LA, like everywhere, which is really frustrating. But when I was in uh, London, I saw it and I literally went up to the woman. I'm like, this is my friend's pin. You, you just copied it. And I told her <laughs> and I was with my girlfriend. And she's like, stop, stop. I'm like, no, this is my friend's pin. Like, you can't sell this. And I was trying to stick up for you because I'm like, this is just f***ed up. Like, you make such a, yeah. an amazing character and it's just being knocked off in this shitty little London market, you know? 
Well, I, I mean, I can't hate on the, the fine people of London trying to get the hustle. But uh, I, I think a lot of what happens is like you get these uh, um, like red bubble and things like this and people just bulk by and then like someone sells it to someone else and then they don't realize where it comes from. And I, I've spoken to a few people who sort of sell them online and things. And that's usually the case. They don't even realize uh, where it's come from. Um, but at the same time, I, I can't complain about, you know, uh people seeing the value in it and, and it and it's sort of almost becoming its own thing it's like that's super valuable in itself and it's not like i'm broke like <laughs> it, it, it's all good it's you know so yeah i'm not going to be super fussy about that no totally yeah it's it's a necessary evil i mean somebody's trying to uh to, to copy your work i guess at the end of the day it's a sign that you're doing something right i did hear a story about the bean and the creation of the bean was that you may have had a sort of drunkenly night and you woke up to this kind of thing that was almost like a a, a, a version of the bean is this is this a true story or is this a, a tale uh it was my okay so the the drinking age in the uk is like oh wait no is it 18. i, I thought it was like 16. <laughs> I, I think you could drink with food at 16 but anyway um oh, what a it, weird yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah so it was like my 16th birthday and i remember i was having a like a party and there's a there's a corner shop around the around the corners of where i used to live and they had these cardboard uh like uh cut out things to put over a bollard like as advertising um but we ended up uh, borrowing them. <laughs> and, Is that uh, why the cops just showed up five minutes ago? <laughs> oh yeah, they just figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> the By the way, what year was this? Uh, 2016. Yeah. Uh, or 17. Yeah. Wow. First of all, one, that's not a lot of time for you to have built built all this up. But two, you're fucking young. How old are you? I'm 22 now. Yeah, I just had my birthday. Dude, I think you were 19 when I met you or something. That's crazy though. Like, wow, you're a youngster, man. It makes me feel old as shit. <laughs> Dude, I feel old now, like looking at some of the kids on TikTok, it's like, they're like, they're, you know, they're coming up at like 15 and stuff. And I'm like, oh my goodness. But yeah, yeah, I just had to old man. Yeah, I had to stop doing that. But, but anyway, so yeah, the, the bean was born out of a, 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 a very uh, crude Sharpie drawing on one of those uh, cardboard things. And, uh, and the rest is history. So it's great. <laughs> That's amazing. And what I love about the bean among many things is well first of all it's there's no gender to the bean correct yeah it's just bean i yeah. love that it's the bean um <laughs> it's it's laziness it's laziness in writing i just i, I couldn't be bothered <laughs> no i i dude i think it's i think it's good uh on many levels because also it's the mystery surrounding it is almost like blue from blue's clues nobody really knew mm. what the gender of blue was um and now we're in a world where we, we you know like we don't need a gender binary. So I think that's a great thing for everybody. It's, it's not a bad thing. We'll say that. Um, mm. But yeah, the bean has kind of become this, you know, timeless cartoon character because of uh, this kind of feel good naivety that the bean has. And I think that makes them an instantly, you know, relatable and likable character, which is really as good as it can get when you're writing for a character or designing a character. Uh, was that something that was something you had in mind? Um, I think for me bean has always been a, a character which sort of represents like the the childish sort of innocent side that everyone has in a certain amount um and then you know when people see it online in the animations and things they i, I think what's appealing is like they can recognize that this is like a truancy and it's like it, it's still relevant even if you are like an older person now and things and like you have like bills and stuff it's like you still end up like oh no uh I don't know, messing up an order on Uber Eats or something like <laughs> it's like like I, I think there's a little bit of being in everyone, basically, in a cheesy way. <laughs> no, no, no. That is exactly why I say such an instantly relatable and likable character. Absolutely timeless. Um, and the question I have about being is why? Why pink? Because it's such a good choice and obviously it feels so perfect for that character. And uh, we, we don't have many iconic pink characters besides Bean. We have a few, if you can guess, who. you have any idea which characters I'm thinking of? Uh, Patrick, I don't know. Yep, Patrick, yeah. <laughs> uh, damn. I feel like there's a bunch. Of yeah, th <laughs> there's there's like ones that are like decently big, but the biggest ones I can think of are like Courage the Cowardly Dog and Peppa Pig. 
yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, Peppa Pig, yeah. <laughs> but like color, I think, plays such a large factor. Because when you think about SpongeBob, you think about he's the biggest yeah. yellow character there's ever been and will forever be like what you think of when you see yellow, for me anyway. So what was the decision making behind the pink? Um, didn't really, I don't know, decide anything. I think at the start it was meant to be like more, this is gonna, this is gonna sound weird, but it was meant to be more sort of creepy and like a fleshy character because it was like teenage oh, wow. angst. <laughs> And then, and then I was like, and, uh, and then slowly it became like a warmer pink. And then I was like, okay, maybe it's like a like a strawberry marshmallow. Or something. I don't know. So, anyway, it's like it, it it changed like that. And but I think now it's it, the character. I try and make it as synonymous as possible with uh, like comfort and sort of just like a big pillow. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's great, and that also adds for great crossover when it comes to merch and the plushies that you've put out in the past and stuff like that. So are, are there any other uh, characters in the Catnips universe that we should be on the lookout for that you could talk about? Yeah, so there's Doggo, Kato, <laughs> and uh, Nana Bean. Um, there's a now, I, I recently did an animation and there's a, we started featuring uh, a couple of raccoons and horses and things like this, which have yet to have any names. But uh, they'll probably be like, also, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <rack them. laughs> super lazy. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, I like the idea of like slowly introducing uh, characters and, and sort of more world building, I guess. But the thing is, for me, it, I've I've only really been doing uh, animation now for like the past year or so, um, wow. and in in like a full on way, and all of it's sort of been like 20, 30 second uh, clips for like TikTok and Reels. And it's sort of hard to communicate a lot of story in that amount of time. Um, <laughs> and I think sure. the, the next step now is uh, moving into longer form, like like what a minute, <laughs> like two minutes. And then seeing, uh, you know, if we can build some like little bits of story and like what's going on with Nana Bean? Like how is she related? Is she a bean too? What does it mean? like <laughs> that'll that'll be the next avenue uh but right now it's just introducing people no i love that and thinking about how you communicate story and storytelling in general and it's extra hard with bean in some ways because bean doesn't speak which i think is such an amazing like i just think it's such a great concept and we talked about that when we met kind of about how uh the bean doesn't say much and this could be potentially a theme with you know whatever you put out next like even a movie or a TV show or anything like that. So uh, would you see these other characters sort of having those same, uh, the same quietness of Bean or is that like Bean's thing? Yeah, um, I, I think the other characters should talk because they can't just all just be like, <laughs> like Imagine. a fully mute. But <laughs> uh, I mean, there's a ton of characters which don't talk. Like there's like Pingu, uh, what's, what's that? There's a, the monkey, what's the, I think there's a monkey which doesn't talk. There's a bunch, and it's like. <laughs> Wait, you um, mean in other, not in your world, other worlds. Yeah, yeah, in, in yeah. other, in other. That's uh, some weird Welsh cartoon yeah. that I don't know about, bro. I don't. <laughs> yeah, probably, I don't know it either. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, so I think it's possible that you get a lot of issue where you're trying to communicate story and like important dialogue, and and then it becomes a challenge to uh, try and work around that with a character who you can't just say like go to the shop or something like it's like it, it's tricky um but at the same time uh, it's also really beneficial because your character can appeal to people on a more universal level it's not stunted by a certain language and you don't have to worry mm, about a totally. lot of different elements so totally. yeah and and i think people can relate to it somewhat uh like because if i suddenly like added a, a super deep like I don't know, like uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson voices beat. It's like <laughs> suddenly, like all of like the middle-aged women can't relate, like <laughs> on like a personal <laughs> level. So I don't know, um, but yeah, it, it is a. Is it? I, I'm more sort of walking into it and just trying to figure it out as it goes um, and see if we can work it without. It's all part of the process, and like a big thing I talk about this show is the creator process, how people are developing these things. For and for you, it's developing really strong characters storylines, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's also developing your own business, which is what I talk about a lot in regards to the creator economy. That's like a term that's been going around this past couple months. The idea that like creators can run their own businesses. And I feel like your personal creator economy 
is just so well oiled at this point because you put out so much stuff all the time. Uh, yeah, as I said earlier, you have murals, you have collaborated on probably one of my favorite videos with Boy Pablo. It's honestly just like really amazing. And I, first of all, I love the song. And then of course the music video is just Thank unreal, you, man. unreal, man. That's and sick. then now you have, you you do all this merch and you work with killer merch. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously it's like when, when you don't work for, when you're your own company, you have to make money a certain way to keep everything going. Um, but we try and do that in like the, the best way possible. Uh, so all the content is like always free. Like there's, there's no sort of paywalls for any um, animation or anything like this. Um, and if people feel like they want to support, like we try and offer like the highest quality, like hoodies and things like this with being on and, and then plushies and things like this, um, which, uh, it, yeah, I, I, I think things which are pretty like like not random in terms of like product like uh i i like it to be something you buy and it gives you the same sort of cozy feeling as uh as watching the videos that's sort of the goal with it so now it's just looking at like other products like what uh, what's the next step uh in terms of like what we could make could we make like like furniture or like bean <laughs> bags we, yeah like <laughs> i don't know um and yeah so like how do we take it from here and how do we be more creative uh, and and uh yeah work that out but it's still very early like I, I still feel like a complete rookie when it comes to that stuff when i was in la i actually went to killer merch's place with danny and i helped uh mm -hmm. do some content with his plushies and all this stuff and it was kind of this like holy shit moment for me because i remember just being in a basement with him and a couple friends at 368 just like doing like packaging all the stuff and sending out orders even delivering some some orders to people in new york taking ubers and surprising fans and like just to see kind of how it's been it's become uh this bigger production on a greater scale made me so happy because first of all killer merch they just seem like really awesome people who really care about quality and all the design and everything i know people have had amazing experiences working with them so seeing how it becomes this corporate production but still doesn't lose its charm and it's uh, its personality is awesome and i think that it's like just another way to enhance your creator economy a little bit further yeah I, it's definitely like we we want to take our time with any product we make and, and things like this and make sure it's like up to snuff before we put it out and um that you get so many of these uh like companies which will just produce like tons and tons and tons and then and then it just sits in a warehouse or you know it like the quality is really crappy and and with a killer it's, it's like we know it's going to be good so that's been a, a a real blessing to uh to the operation and things like that so and hopefully you know moving forward like we can make even cooler stuff yeah man i mean so moving forward how do you plan to kind of like manage all this even more like on a, on a bigger scale as you kind of start diving into like uh longer form or whatever uh, like what's to come in the future and how are you going to actively fight things like burnout and all these things that a lot of creators especially like youtubers in the past couple of years have been uh, almost experiencing because you're a pretty chill guy like do you get stressed out with this stuff yeah uh, under the facade i'm, I'm an extremely uh stressed out person <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, um no i i like and I've, I've i've had burnout and things before and um it's unpleasant um but I, I i i do think that sometimes like as, as content creators we there's no cap to how much we can make right, right. Uh, so sort of, we can just keep going and that's how we become burnt out is we're, we're just like for ages we're in that mentality where it's like just do more just do more like while you're taking a break you could do a little more and then suddenly you just sort of get hit by a ton of bricks or you get ill or something and it's like uh you just you just can't do it and then you're wiped out for like a month um and that's a problem, but the more the more you sort of uh, go up to that like precipice of like where I'm going to burn out uh, and try and ride that certain point, um, I think you become more aware of like what you can tolerate, what you can't. Like, should I outsource this part of the production? Um, like, what can I do to to improve it? Um, and that's really important, but it does require that like. Uh, you are entertaining the idea of yeah just burning out pretty hard a lot <laughs> so i mean the, the extra help and and uh pacing yourself is always a really good thing especially when you have people who care about you 
and mm. want to see your mental health you know succeed and everything like that um with that being said i hear through the grapevine that la might be your your next destination is that true yeah well waiting on the u.s embassy for that one but uh <laughs> should we just get married yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't speed it up unfortunately oh but, really uh, all right <laughs> yeah because we're, we're like right there with it um but they've shut down all the embassies in the uk uh because of covid and things like this so Damn, literally crazy. can't like no one can go in for an interview so it's uh yeah it's tough but we're you know waiting on that and hopefully it opens and then the next step is to um yeah get get more of like an office structure and and try and uh develop a team who can really work on this rather than just like uh, me and a few people are like in different places and it, it still works but it's not as cohesive i'd really love to see something where it's like everyone in a room and everyone can have a, an input and and it just feel like a teamwork well you know man i'm i'm available you, you have, <laughs> <laughs> if you have say, yeah, info. <laughs> voice over for being <laughs> yes sir Dude, they would not like my voice on Bean. I sound like a fucking weirdo. I don't. <laughs> I would never. I would never oh, do that to Bean. <laughs> but uh, it's funny you mentioned that because I was actually speaking with Danny recently, and I, t- I was thinking about LA and kind of like how they have all these houses or collectives. Uh, you know, they have Hype House, which is like the TikTok one. They have sketch comedy collectives like Churdleys and Trevor Wallace, Sir Spence, Blake. Like all these people are all like these uh, almost pockets of just really i mean i I don't know about tiktok houses but uh (laughs) the sketch comedians anyway are super talented uh and it's kind of sick that they all have their own pocket but what i think it's lacking is the pocket of like people who are really into animation storytelling through animation building characters building worlds like someone like you do someone like danny does talentless writers another one who i really like or, or me like all these different people i feel like there's not a group of collective people that do specifically that so i would be really interested to see kind of a world in which we're all together in la and we're just you know feeding off of each other's creative energies and helping each other out and stuff i think that would be awesome yeah that's definitely uh definitely a goal of mine uh i i think that the problem with animation you say like no one else is really doing it is like animation is such a production uh so you either have to like get some money from somewhere else or spend 10 years developing it um and like like i've been in it in it for a minute but it, it's still like it, it, everything is a process everything is a step and there's so much quality control um that it's not something where you can just be like i'll get bill ted jim and wendy and we'll just like <laughs> put it all together it's like it, it, it it's definitely a slower burn but what you make is is longer lasting i feel so it's worth it does it so does that create the incentive to work with a network in your mind where it's like i if i had a network i could speed up this process i could have a team of all these people because then as you said like quality or maybe your ideas being taken out of context all these different things that people experience when they work with big networks and kind of have their voice silenced a bit do you are you at all worried about that or is the incentive like is there a big enough incentive to work with uh companies on on your work yeah um, so i've spoken a little bit with um a few people from networks and and things like this and originally i wanted to pitch an idea for like an animated show uh roughly based on bean and and things and and like got to the point where the 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 pitch was there and it was all sort of like ready to roll out um and then i i decided like i i feel like it's still really early um and my main thing is is like i don't want to you know run this character into it and you know just drop it in a and with a team and, and they don't know how to run it or it or it's very hard for me to communicate my issues when i've signed this contract then it's like 10 people down the line have control and it's it just gets pretty messy um and i i really like like the idea of seeing how far we can take it independently um and how much we can function uh you know without outsider money and things like this and try and make something which is like on par to a spongebob eventually uh, it's very unrealistic but at the same time it's like I, I feel like so many youtubers now have such a big production it's almost on par to you know 
uh, traditional media and things like this. And so why couldn't the same apply to um, like, you know, animation and a YouTube channel in the future? You know, when they were creating SpongeBob, they were they were literally pitching a fucking talking sponge who lives in a pineapple. So I would I wouldn't say that it's not possible because I think <laughs> it's certainly certainly is possible and you're taking all the stepping stones to make that possible and as you said these youtubers they're doing it and they're making their money for themselves and i think that is amazing news for creators terrible news for networks but uh you see like a lot of these people like someone like yes theory who has just built this insane universe around their videos it's like they're doing such a good job with managing this on their own and they, they haven't sold to a netflix yet any of these things which I'm sure are probably knocking at their door every single day trying to do these things. So I think there's something to be, something to be said about holding on to your projects and waiting till the time is right because we see people jump in and we they they lose their shit right away and it's like yeah yeah they you know they 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 see the the check and they're just like let's run it and then the people who uh, you know take it on board they don't have the same attention to detail or the same respect for the product um, and you know could even see it as like oh this is like a whole other thing and it's just like yeah it, it's uh I, I like i've spent five years caring very deeply about this thing and i'm so i'm super hesitant about uh you know suddenly veering left and yeah so do you have any like advice for me as a new creator <laughs> i can't i can't give you advice because i i literally didn't post for like the past three weeks like <laughs> i i you mentioned burnout i literally had a burnout and just had to like be like okay I'm gonna go to London and do nothing. Uh, but now I'm back and it's like, um, and, and I am sort of on a regiment now. Where it's like at least something a week and then we do this certain amount of stories and things. Um, and the main thing I've noticed is that in general with social media and, and just generally, it's like, if you want something to succeed, it's consistency over time. And like when I first started on Instagram, it was an animation, but I was drawing like a comic every other day. And it was the consistency that built that community. Uh, Cause they knew like I was gonna post this day and like they, they, they and there would be like conversations and, and things about like the last post and things. And it was so recent that people had it in the back of their mind. Um, and I, you look at anyone who's succeeding at the moment uh, in podcasting or anything like YouTube, it's all about consistency over time. That's great. I mean, I, I love that. With that being said, man, thank you so much for coming on. I, we've been friends for a couple of years now, but it really means a lot to me that you gave this channel a chance. It's such a small production and it's like to have people that I really admire on is something that is awesome. And just, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. No, it's fun, man. Thank you for having me on. Sick. Of course. Anytime, man. Uh, everybody, if you're new here, please make sure to like comment and subscribe maybe drop a comment and let us know uh, what your favorite th favorite catnips video is maybe your favorite character whatever you'd like tell tell harry he's he's cute whatever whatever you want <laughs> <laughs> wow thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much everybody for watching this episode of matt the bat's bat shit show i'm your host uh, the bat matt the bat you know uh so make sure to tune in next week or else <laughs> this is where you say or else oh or else <laughs> My dream is to like make a super cut of like all these cool people saying or else. Oh, wait, let me do that again. Yeah, you want to do it again? <laughs> yeah. Or else. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, bro.